I think that the Neptune theme of Orca, Atuma, and Namor should all have synergy. And I think the real simple synergy is that their abilities don't affect each other. Imagine being able to play Atuma with Orca in a lane and have Atuma not die and Orca keep its ongoing. Yeah. Then you've got a deck. If they could have their, and same thing with Namor. You know, one of the things I want to talk about tonight, you know, kind (laughs) of has has that type of conversation built into it. So if you're good to record, good sir, I think I am. I'm ready, man. Let's get it. So I think we can go ahead and start the podcast and say, welcome. Welcome, my name, everyone. For those who do not know, my name is Guest, also known as It's Guest Gaming. I am joined, as always, with Default Dan over here on my right-hand side. Welcome to the Snapback, Snapback or Snapback. It's, it's apparently Snapback <laughs> now. I, it, we've we've regionalized differently. A little bit so. snarky now. Welcome so. to the Snapback podcast, where you <laughs> snap and well, we snap back. So... <laughs> The, see, Professor X has been taking over my life in a whole different Several way events. recently. So. <laughs> Default Dan, <laughs> how are you? Good, sir. <laughs> I'm doing good, man. Just excited, excited. So again, if you're watching this live. Uh, you guys are going to be with us as the new season drops. And if you're not, uh, you're probably in the new season. So excited to talk about all the good stuff tonight as we prepare for that in just a few hours. Yeah, I mean, as the time we're recording this, we're a couple hours away from the Guardians of the Galaxy Nebula season going live, and we I definitely want to talk about that tonight. Uh, I have a couple of things I want to talk about specifically regarding one of the tournaments that just recently happened. Uh, there's mm-hmm. a really hot topic floating around in Shana, 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 Unana, whatever her name is, and... And then maybe some fun decks to get ready for the Nebula season. I know I put out my video. I know you have a deck that yeah. you want to talk about specifically tonight as well. And over uh, on top, I should say, I should put the caveat as well that on top <laughs> of that, as we head towards it, we'll go into more detail about what Nebula is going to bring to the game for everybody. Yeah in general, not just the deck that she'll be, you know, a deck that she'll be good in, because we're going to move with the deck of the week yeah. segment. We talked about it a little bit earlier, um, where one day a week, uh, default Dan will have, the, I was like, which name am I using? And I just brain fart. Am I going, Brit Dan, <laughs> de- default Brit, de- de- bat. hi Kelly. That guy. It's like, is it, that yeah, guy. that guy, like <laughs> that, that the beardo over there, he'll do yeah, yeah. one of the podcasts per week and I'll do the other. So uh, as of right now, Mondays, as, as mm-hmm. we're doing the recordings as of now, that will be his day. And then I'll present my decks on Thursdays. So yeah. we'll start today's conversation. Uh, we'll come to Nebula later on because there's a lot to talk about as well, including things that have happened over the last few days. And yeah. I want to showcase um, an interesting conversation that first started with Shanana Unana, Shana. Uh, yeah. We'll start there tonight. Because I saw an absolutely fantastic post and shout out to the Snap Foo podcast as well with Jay Wang mm-hmm. and Justin and all mm-hmm. look. Absolutely like as I was reading this thread about a test that was done with her through the magic of AI, I was like, <laughs> ooh, this is intriguing. Because basically, yeah. long story short, if you're not looking at this live and you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or anything in between, basically what was happened. What, what was done was they took the new version of Shanna and said, what happened if I played her 500,000 times? And knowing that her on reveal is going to reveal out a one cost mm-hmm. card to each location, how good is it most likely to be for me given the current one drops that exists in the game? So he goes yeah. on and does this whole thread and articulates every single piece of it beautifully showcases everything for us to say okay here's what i did here's how i did it here's everything you need to know about making it happen as my video decides to freak out on me right (laughs) and look through all of the one costs and all of the benefits all the negatives the chances of them landing they got rid of obviously all the token cards because the things that will only pull from shannon not like the demon or the rock so we removed obviously all of those and calculated out of 500,000 games using the magic of chat GPT, which is amazing that, you know, we have yeah. this as even an option for us. What is the average power you're going mm-hmm. to get on the board? Now, a couple of caveats with this. The caveats are, for example, the negative effect ones. 
and the positive reinforcement are not being factored in. So what I mean by that is it's not taking into the fact that Ant-Man gets his ongoing activated and he's getting his extra plus three power or knowing yeah. that you're going to land Hawkeye and then the following turn, you're going to get an extra plus two. No, no, no. Just on the board. Yeah. Here's how much can drop on the board in this scenario. You know, no sunspot extra power later in that turn. How much is going to yeah. occupy the board? And it's not thinking about all the boost ups. You know, you think obviously one drops, you think Kazar, you think Zoo, mm -hmm. you think, uh, you know, Patriot and Onslaught and all these other things. It's just talking raw power. Yeah. And the overall total power, the, the median of it was five power out of 500,000 games yeah. played. It was right around yeah. between five, a little bit toward leading towards six on the average. But I was kind of floored looking at all of this information. And I'll make sure that if you're watching this on YouTube and you're looking at this on yeah. Spotify, that the, the links to this post, because it's a really interesting, really, really interesting yeah. post, looking at all of the information about how this works and how much power you actually get out of the Shanna simulation thing, you're most likely to get an extra five power or an extra six power, which means Shanna in a way, and I'll let you spin off of that because I know you yeah, want yeah. to, is giving you a 4.9 or a 4.10 in total when she yeah. drops onto the board. Yeah, and, and it may sound a little low, but you have to remember, like you're mentioning, this is still taking into account like Hood is a negative two. So, you know, one yeah. of the worst cases is she could hit and you could get plus zero. You get the negative two and then two of the one drop, you know, one powers uh, on the board and now you've got zero. So that's kind of your worst case uh, going forward. To that point, he also mentions in the article that with the ones that do buff, so Ant-Man, Sunspot, um, we've also got to think about like Kitty will be returning pretty soon. You've got Nebula that'll be added to that list. What wasn't in this list, right? Those two are not in the list. Right. So there, there's definitely a little bit more power that you could probably squeak out of there, but you have to also remember that, and this is kind of what I look at with Shanna. So we, we talked about this last podcast or podcast before, just in general, since a lot of people are talking about her, she's not a bad card. A 410 on paper looks great. I mean, so many people play Typhoid Mary. 410 with a huge negative, you know, minus one to all your other cards. Mm -hmm. um, but... You also have to remember that's taking up four slots. So if you play your middle, that's two, that's half your slots in the middle. And so you're putting down a four, six, usually uh, there over two, two slots. You're also putting, you know, two others. So one on each of the things. Um, so, I, you know, those are the things I want to talk about. But but one of the ones I want to kind of go ahead and, and push away to the side. Right. Because this is the argument for Shanna. This is one of my arguments for Shanna. Killmonger. Well, let's go ahead and take yeah. Killmonger out of that equation because you could literally say that about every card in this exactly. game. Right? This 100%. card's good, but Cosmo. This card's good, but Enchantress. So as we're looking at it, right, it, it's one of those things where yes, there's Killmonger. You throw that down and Killmonger wipes everything that came down. But yeah, what what are your thoughts when it comes to four slots, this much power? Do you still see her being Pretty good, pretty decent. I still see her being okay, but there's one thing I want to make about the Killmonger conversation is that the frequency of Killmonger right now is very high. In the May season, Killmonger's frequency is going to go up because we're about to have a one cost card go to every single account in Kitty Pride. And then we're also going to have a one cost card as the season pass. So Killmonger's use is going to go way, way up. On top of that, I think that the conversation is still relevant a little bit with Killmonger because not just how much you're obviously using him this particular May 2023 month, but also past that. Killmonger affects multiple lanes. That's very different than Rogue, very different than Enchantress, very different than Shang-Chi. If something's going to die, it's going to die in multiple locations, specifically. And Killmonger has that flexibility. Yes, there could be a potential negative side on your end. But I think the value of what Shanna brings to the table 
is not necessarily the one drops that she puts down. It's either A, yeah. the board space that she occupies, so you can have positive effects like Dazzler for Shazzle Dazzle, or it's the fact that you have a bunch of cards that you can kill with Killmonger on turn five and have a cheap death to play on turn six. So those were, are, the, are the moments where I say that she's probably got the most value. And then if you yeah. are on the upper half of, let's say you're trying to get that death down and you're looking to do the kill, turn four comes down and all of a sudden you end up with that, you know, from the, we have it up on screen here on the, in the video podcast, but you end up with a total of 10 power drops on the board. You get the Titania, mm -hmm. you get the whatever, whatever. I'm not going to do that real fast enough, right? Because it's always yeah, three yeah. unique cards. It's never repetitions of the same, of one of the cards. Right, right. So say so you end up with 10 power on the board. Well, hmm. Maybe it's more valuable valuable for me to not play that combo like that, and now I got to yeah. change my strategy. So, when you're using her, you're typically trying to find those two paths to victory. It's either this is your backup plan, or and this is your primary tactic, or vice versa. Yeah, I think that she has value, but I do not think that her value comes from the actual one cost cards themselves unless if you specifically get x y and z you pull a kitty pride you pull a sunspot you pull a whatever that comes on out yeah. right once yeah, those yeah. once those specific ones drop then there's real value but until then i just think it's kind of meh yeah and and i think that's the problem with it right the the rng of what you're going to pull so for instance yeah. And, and this is the whole, I mean, you can make any argument around it, right? A lot of people say she needs to come down on turn six. That way you're Killmonger proof. But if she comes down on turn six, you may get hit with a Hood, a Kitty Pride, and a Nebula. All three of those cards, now you're at zero, right? You're at plus yeah. zero to the board, and you've got three cards that are just not good. But if you would have hit that on turn four or maybe turn three because you Psylocke or you Zaboot or something, now you have three cards that are going to give you huge value because you have a demon in hand you have uh you know a nebula that's kind of shutting down a lane or you have you know kitty pride or sunspot or any of those that are going to keep getting boosted so yeah i i think the hard part with her in general is just the fact that you don't know what you're going to get it it kind of comes down to the same thing with agent 13 uh yeah. colson and things like that where you know you may get a good card you may get a crappy card and is there a better play on four is there a better play on six when you're doing it and so i don't know i i think she's a card i mean she is a card but i think she's a yeah, card that good. can be <laughs> <laughs> i think she is a card that can do something um but it's going to be one of those that's going to be very rng and you're going to have to play a lot of games to really determine is she worth it is there a better four drop is there a more consistent deck because yeah, you could throw it down early and get a ghost and maybe you want ghost in your deck yeah. or you could throw it down early and get a ghost and it's not <laughs> the card you want. Yeah. Um, True. because now your, your professor X isn't locking out those doom bots, right? Because he's flipping second, uh, to, to doom or something. So, yeah, I don't know. I, again, I think it's really cool going back to the, the, the article and, and the, t uh, tweet here. It's really cool that they took the time, and yes, it was ChatGPT, so it probably wasn't that much time, but they did pull into Excel, and they did a whole bunch of stuff around it to really break it down to say, like, hey, here's what your average is. So she's right. equivalent to some of the hardest-hitting four drops uh, in the game. Just have to keep in mind, it takes four slots. So if you go 410, which is on average, divided by four slots, now you're looking at one twos across across the board, right? One yeah. need, so is it is it worth that? I don't know. I don't know. The, to me, I look at it like this. Okay. I look at the four slots out on the board. I look at 10 power that it mm -hmm. on average is occupying up between her plus the other, you know, one drops. Divide that up, obviously, then that's two and a half power per slot. Yeah. For a total of what would have typically been, you know, you have a four power card and then three, uh, sorry, three, uh, blah, 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 that's all folks, a four cost card 
and three one-cost cards. So on average, it would have been the equivalent of seven mana worth, but for the price of four, dropping yeah. down on average 10 power. That's, to me, overall still worse because I look at something like a She-Hulk, yeah. which is a 6-9. Yes, it's in a single lane. Or I'm looking at something like even a more boosted up uh, Mr. Well, Sinister Doom. can do better. Doom but, is... But take, take Doom. Yeah. It's, it's a six drop yeah, for Doom. 15 across three exactly. Exactly. locations. That given oh. the spread of what she brings you know, for b- occupying board space, if yeah. you play her with that in mind, that's where the strength of what she brings to the table is, in my opinion. It's not necessarily about running a zoo with a bunch of one drops for her. It's, I think, yeah. a little bit more geared towards either killing those one drops with Killmonger and doing a death combo, like some kind of destroy, you know, run Carnage and mm-hmm. Venom and all these other things afterwards. Or it's just go for a Dazzler, Mojo, lock up lanes. Yeah you know, Iron Man, those kinds of combos, like just to get out a bunch of stuff into a bunch of different lanes and you're spreading wide. It's what Dr. Why Dr. Doom is so powerful because you're spreading yeah. 15 power over three lanes. This is spreading 10 power on average over three lanes, which in, in one aspect isn't too bad, but in another aspect, yeah. you know, I, I'd rather see her as a four seven that puts a one cost oh. card in the opposite two <laughs> lanes. Yeah, yeah. So she doesn't then fill the up strategy her lane. changes. Yeah, yeah. Right. She doesn't put a second a second one in her lane. I'd rather her have the extra power and then put random cards into the other two. And then that's when I feel like, okay, now she's got real value yeah. to me. Even though obviously she's supposed to be something that synergizes heavily with Kazar. That's the whole point. Yeah. Right. I think and I think that that change could make her more viable. Now again, I would I would have to see what that looks like on average because I would be concerned of uh zabu and then now she's a three seven plus two more cards so now you're at like a three um what is that almost 11 three eleven somewhere yeah. around in there mm-hmm. um or three eleven plus essentially um but i mean I, again i i think at this point she's still not going to be as good i i think she's one of those cards where if you're already not filling up your stuff then she's probably okay but to your point, when you look at Zoo, Zoo doesn't have a problem filling up all the lanes. So putting her in the deck may actually be detrimental because now you could be putting bad one drops in the lanes instead yeah. of what you wanted to put in there, which goes back to Dazzler, Mojo, and those kind of things, right? So yeah, I mean, it could be viable, but you're going to have to play her on turn six if you're going to play with those cards because yeah. you can't run the risk of, I throw all these down and kill Mugger kills them on turn six. I need you to have priority so I can finalize it on turn six. I may or may not te- be testing that exact scenario for something. Yeah. As we speak. So. May or may not. And we'll say, you know, well, exactly. I, I'd like to make her work. I just think there are always better options. Almost yeah. always better options. Um, yeah. Speaking of better options for this deck in particular, you got to look at four cost cards. Typically in a zoo deck, you're looking at boost ups. You're looking and trying to figure out ways to do it. And Super Scroll, I'm sorry, is taking that spot. If I'm if I'm playing a zoo deck, I'm more likely to want to put Super Scroll in it than yeah. I am to put in Shanna because I put all my other one costs out there. Or I've got Ultron. I've got all these other things, right? And clearly, I'm not alone because in the first, well, the most recent, the first major tournament post patch, as quoted by Snap Battle Arena, yeah, the top four decks are all Patriot-focused decks. Yes, 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 yes. And so, we've seen what's happened when this type of thing happens before, so I want to present to you the information to the public first for those who have not seen it, and then default Dan dive on in here, because the deck that won was a Super Scrawl Patriot abomination deck i'll use that combo to kind of articulate the differences between them that was the winning deck the runner-up that went up against it was pretty much the exact same deck copy Mm -hmm. for copy card for card boost up for boost up the the top four roundouts were from using 
onslaught variations of Patriot and then running a Kazar version of Patriot. So yeah. I guess my worry is whenever we see these be so prominent in, you know, what is now a very relevant tournament scene, mm -hmm. it always makes people go pitchfork time, right? Yeah. So, and so is it? And so if we look at this though, I, I think there was there was a few answers. So I'm gonna point out one other card that's in all four of these decks. Yep. Which is debris. So yep. one of the big things that we also saw after this nerf was the the return of Galactus. There's so many Galactus players out there. And and I still agree. I still am on that that soapbox that Galactus is not good in battle mode. But there are people that run him. And I do feel like Debris has started to find a lot of answers to a lot of decks um, in here. And you mentioned it before. Currently, Killmonger is in hibernation. Now, he will return when Nebula comes back, when we get Kitty Pride later this month. Right, We're yep. going to have so many good one-drops, he's going to be back. But right now, he's kind of went into hiding. And that's where this Ultron, you know, turn six, uh, would get shut down. That's where this debris type stuff would get, you know, shut down. But yeah, right now, this deck is a strong deck. And it is Super Scroll that's making it so strong because in the mirror matches, when you're going against the Dino decks, you have to think about the fact that Dino deck is probably one of the hardest decks to beat right now. If you just look at sure power, right? The biggest cards coming down. And now you throw Super Scroll in here. And you have your own Dino. You have your own Darkhawk. This card will beat any lane if you're playing against that type of deck, you know, minus a Shang-Chi or something like that. So, right. um, yeah, it's, it's, fa it's crazy to think of how fast the meta changes, either post-nerfs, OTA changes, you know, all of that. And the fact that each, I mean, these tournaments are running weekly. Like, there's two a week for Battle Arena. There's one week also for the snap.fan open so those are three huge tournaments those are the three biggest tournaments currently in marvel snap um if you guys don't know listening to the podcast if you haven't checked out the battle arena tournaments there are 128 people tournaments you've got the snap.fan open that's like 300 to 500 people tournaments and then everything else is you know your normal 16 players and things like that so if you want to look at like the the massive numbers of what people are bringing these are good examples and and yeah patriots doing work and and wiggins over here in chat is also saying we're starting to see a rise of sarah surfer come back which is your killmonger is your cosmo is your decks to kind of try to shut some of this down it's your rogue rogue is huge against this deck because yep. you can grab that super scroll um but if we're also talking about super scroll i want to get your thoughts here because Later this month, we're going to get your favorite card. I know. Which is the Living Tribunal, which is an ongoing card uh -huh. that's going to want to work with Iron Man and other cards like that. So now, Super Skull is going to be a card to stick in almost every deck if that deck becomes a big deck. Because you're like, hey, yep. I like your Iron Man and, and uh, Living Tribunal. How about I have one that has all of those two? All right. So. You, you, you've you accidentally segued into something I want to say. Okay. Go for it. Sorry to Bootman proactively, because I know how much he loves his card. But I'm going to tell you right now, I think Super Scroll needs to be changed. I think he needs to be changed and nerfed that he only steals the ongoing effects from this lane. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. Um, it's going to be not just the living tribunal that's going to be an issue. I more mm -hmm. so see an issue with the card right before it, High Evolutionary. There are two, there are going to be more new ongoings that are going to be coming to the game because of these redone effects due to High yeah. Evolutionary being in the decks. And that's going to be something that's going to affect the entire board state because of Super Scroll. So you're going to have negative effects also going out here, just like the stones do. He's absorbing the stones effects from another lane mm -hmm. over and now putting it out on that lane. I think that his ability is too wide. 
And the fact that it is such a hard counter to the exact same deck because it can take everything from everywhere. It can take the Dark Hawk, the Mystique, the Devil Dino, the Zabu, the Se- everything simultaneously, including doubling of its own effect. The fact that you can put Devil Dino in lane number one and you can put Mystique in lane number two and it will run both effects in full. And if it was giving each of those plus 10, you now have plus 20 on your card. Yeah. I think that that's going to become an issue and it's going to be a scaling issue so much so that I'm sorry to the rest of the world, but I think Super Scroll needs to be on the watch list and the solve for it is to have him be something that only copies all of the ongoings from one lane because it's going to kill two mm-hmm. things at once. It's going to kill how strong he is but still make keep him strong and simultaneously yeah. it will kill the strategy of stacking all your ongoings into one lane for that Patriot Ultron build. It'll stop the Patriot followed by Kazar, followed by Blue Marble, followed by Ultron all in one lane, and boom, the game is done. It will stop all of that simultaneously. What do you think about that idea? You know, here's the thing. If he was a big bad, which he's not, but if he was a big bad, I could see him living for another month or two. Um, but because he's not a big bad, he's right. some, he's, I, he may it's even cool be series three, three, now. Series now. three now. Yeah. yeah. So I, I could definitely see that happen. Now I think that they'll let him go for another couple weeks, but I do think he is on the watch list. Um, again, he hasn't been played a lot until recently, but right. with the fact that they have, and they've confirmed living tribunals ongoing, they've kind of yeah. really I found pushed that. One out. that <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but but they've like they've really pushed that out there to say he's ongoing. Uh, so look at your Iron Man, look at your onslaught, whatever. I think Super Skull becomes too powerful to where he's an answer to almost every deck right now. Like, because even if you think of Galactus, right? He's a he's a four drop null. If you think of um, your your Dino decks, like we we talked about, he's multiple cards. You look mm-hmm. at um, you know even the Patriot decks, like. There's a lot of Patriot decks that can win in the mirror of Patriot because they never play their Patriot. They literally just play Super Scroll. Everything else. And they hope yeah. that you play Patriot. And then they're not playing theirs because you have your Super Scroll. So, like, yeah, I, I think he's definitely one of those cards where he could uh, easily get tweaked. Um, yeah. So, I, yeah, I would definitely, um, definitely say it wouldn't surprise me if he yeah. gets uh, looked at pretty soon. And if it isn't within the next couple of weeks, it's definitely going to come shortly after Living Tribunal. Um, I think so, too. I think it's inevitable at this point because in Matt, because I, I know one of the things I'm going to try to tell you all right now, one of the things I plan on mm-hmm. trying with Level, Living Tribunal is put him directly into the Dark Hawk Devil Dino deck. Yeah, just pretty much as is just plop him on in there. Done. Drop that down yeah. on turn six. And that's a lot of power being divided up. Yeah. really really well, and, easily and that's and and that's kind of the thing right if you think of the sarah control style decks mm-hmm. they're playing the best cards at every at every spot it's not a lot of synergy but it's a lot yeah. of control and he becomes a control card if you draw him he's huge if you don't yeah you've got shang chi or something right like he just ends up being an easy add in that style of deck because you're not looking for a giant six drop you're really yeah. focusing on one through five with Sarah being at the top. And now he's a three drop on six, right? You're dropping yeah. him plus some big card like Dark Hawk or something. So like, yeah, I, I would definitely say he's got to get touched. I like what you're throwing out there. Just it makes sense with most every other change they've made. Just being single lane targeted. I mean, yeah. It, and if they try to do any kind of like two lane shenanigans, I think that that's just going to be too confusing. So. Single lane, I like it, and I think that that's probably yeah. the way they, they need to tackle him. Yeah, single lane strategies in general right now, because of Jeff the Baby Land Shark and Professor Rex, like they are hot topics. They are, uh, sorry, hot, hot focuses, hot game plans and tactics. And we see, we're going to be seeing that even more in the coming weeks. You know, we look at the new season pass card in Nebula. 
and mm-hmm. we see what she's going to be bringing to the game the same way, which is focusing on one lane to be a lane that continues to grow and grow and grow. And I know I've got my decks out there, out in the world of what I plan on running the first couple of days to try out different stuff. But one of the things I'm looking at in particular with Nebula is how often do we actually get her to at least three power? That's the number one thing I'm looking at right now. Um, What do you think? Like, I haven't heard your thoughts or opinions yet on Nebula. What do you think about her as the season pass card in general first? So I think she's a great card. I I think the biggest thing we look at um, when we look at season pass cards is one to forget about how overpowered they used to be. (laughs) I'm saying this because of cards like Zabu that we experienced in uh, Black Panther and things like that, right? Like uh, when those, when those cards dropped, we knew we had some issues um, even before the end surfer and things like that, before they ever dropped. Uh, And so when you look at Nebula, Nebula, Again, your first thought is, ah, oh, there's Killmonger. Right now, he's hibernating. We'll see what happens when she actually drops. Uh, but outside of that, I mean, there's not many cards that are going to interact with her, which means you're playing into her lane. And I love the way she's designed because it's essentially, I'm going to play this, and you got to play in here. And if you don't play in here, she's going to get huge. So I can either take the chance of Space Throne, right, and be like, I'm going to throw her in Space Throne. It's going to be a couple turns. She's going to get plussed. And then if you don't play until turn six, she's going to be pretty big. So you're going to have to definitely have a big drop here, uh, like a 12 power Magneto or something. Um, Or, you know, you can do that to where I'm going to play her in this lane and they're going to have to constantly play in that lane, which means I can now focus on these other lanes and I can slowly take away these lanes with a potential like turn six, turn six drop. Um, You know, going on that, and we're going to be talking about this in a little bit when we talk about decks, I mean, you have other cards like Guardians that are going to really shine because of Nebula, because now you can guess. You can say, I'm going to play Nebula here, and they're probably going to play on Nebula, so I don't get any bigger. Now I'm going to play Groot. And when I play Groot, I'm going to catch him, and my Groot's going to be big. So I I think that there's some really cool play space that they've used with Nebula. I'm excited about the card. Is it going to be my my number one whatever? I don't know. But I'm definitely going to give her a shot. I think she'll be cool. And the only thing that I would double check is, uh, is Kitty Pride. So here's the thing. Kitty Pride later this month is going to give you a play on Nebula's lane every turn, right? Yep. Because you pick her up and you play her. So now you can stop a 100%. Nebula with a Kitty Pride. So, I, I mean, until Kitty comes out, I think should be pretty cool. But once, once Kitty drops, uh, it'll be interesting to see if, again, does Kitty, you know, take care of Nebula? Does Killmonger show up everywhere? But again, Killmonger can kill any one drop. So we just kind of put that there. So what are your thoughts? I really like her. I I like her. I like her design. I do think she's going to be a very, very important and relevant card in Marvel Snap. I think she's going to be one of the top three one drops for you to put into your deck. And I think that she has a lot of potential in every archetype pretty much as of right now. I think that Mm -hmm. Nebula has a lot of positive to her with not too much negative, which means she is powerful. You can plop her down into any deck. And Mm -hmm. as long, honestly, as long as you get her down before turn three, she's fantastic, which in a way could make you think, well, then hold on here. Is this basically the anti black cat? And it's like, no, not really because it's not guaranteed that you're always yeah. going to be able to play a card in a lane in the same in this one particular targeted lane every yeah, single yeah. one, right? And even if you put this down on turn one, the amount yeah. of circumstance you would need to get a card to be put into the lane every single time is very, very particular. You need to have like something that removes cards or eats cards every mm-hmm. single turn to be able to open up at least another mm-hmm. lane of space to keep her at a one, one. So I think she's going to be one that you just kind of come to understand that this is going to be, if you play Nebula, you're competing in this lane. You are officially yeah. saying I am fighting for this lane. Come at me, bro. <laughs> I think that that's what you're doing. And I think yeah. the timing of Nebula 
and how you play her is going to be very important because of that. Um, I think she's yeah. not a card that you play on turn one, personally. I think that she's a card you play more often actually on turn three or four because now it's a threat. Now it's a, oh, I thought I had my tactic down. I knew I was going to compete for this lane and this lane, and, th and now that's all out the window because this is about to become a 1-7. Yeah. I got to keep that in check. And that threat is why I think, you know, and I, I, I have mm -hmm. my, I call it a dust, ga dust Gas and Galactus deck, which is putting Nebula in a Galactus deck. And if you do get her, she's the new replacement for Yondu, in my opinion, because yeah. you're telling them, come at me, bro, come over here, stay in this lane, I'm going to put Galactus over there. Like, that's what you're yeah, really yeah. doing now. And I think that's going to be a hell of a tactic to have to deal with. I think she's incredibly yeah. impactful in that deck. Obviously, you, you think of a lot of variations, you know, you could actually have a lot of fun with bounce with her, even though it's except for the turn that you play her. Even still, mm -hmm. you get her early. She's a really solid card. Really, really, really solid card. Like, yeah, I think she's going to be uh, seriously a top three uh, one drop. And we're oh, definitely. Pass. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, it, you look at you look at one drops, right? And right now, Sunspot is hands down the best one drop followed by kitty pride which gave sunspot a run for her money that three days she was there <laughs> yeah true. um and again i loved kitty pride now kitty pride has an issue uh that is now introduced when she's coming back which is she always returns to your hand so now you're going to have right. to use that energy to play her so she does have a little bit of nuance to her uh which makes her to, in my opinion back on par with sunspot and i think nebula is the same way there's a lot of locations where Nebula is going to shine. So I, I mentioned Space Throne. I don't know if she's yeah. the perfect one for Space Throne, but I mean, yeah. if they literally wait till turn six, she's an 11. So you're going to have to like really do something pretty big there, right? She's technically a nine if they're playing on the last turn. Um, so yeah. you're still going to have to have a 10 power, which is a big six drop. Um, yeah. you, you think of other ones like Kiln. Uh, so Kiln's going to lock down at four, which means five and six. She's going to get, you know, pluses. And if you played her on turn one, she may already get a, a plus there. So there's definitely going to be a lot of these locations where she's going to shine. Um, okay. and just like what, uh, a phaser saying, I mean, you, you've also got like storm where you can artificially, oh, yeah. you know, do storm, put her down like, and, and take over some of these lanes. So, yeah, I think that overall, um, Nebula is going to be one of those cards where, yes, to your point, sometimes she's a turn one play, sometimes she's a turn three play, uh, where you're kind of sneaking her in somewhere to, to yep. mess with them. But yeah, I, again, I think it's a great design on a card and it's going to add to quite a few decks. And now it's going to make you question what your one drop is. Is it Sunspot? Is it Nebula? Yeah. Is it Kitty Pride? You know, well, I think with Nebula. It, there's the huge advantage uh, over Sunspot, which is the fact that she's a 1-1 one, one versus Sunspot who was nerfed down to a 1-0. Yeah. And getting that priority can be really critical depending on the strategy that you're looking to play going into turn two or three. Um, mm -hmm. I think she has a lot of value there. Obviously, it's been apparent for a long time that the Guardians of the Galaxy needed a card that did exactly what Nebula is doing. And that's what she's doing. Yeah. She's rounding up these Guardians because you have, you know, your Rocket Raccoon, Star-Lord, Groot, Drax, and Gamora that are all benefiting from the same idea of play in this lane and I get a bonus because I also did too. And they even tried yeah. to make Groot more, uh, sorry, uh, Groot and Drax more relevant mm -hmm. by switching the ratios in which how much you do. But how much b benefit you actually get from that yeah. card. I think people are, including myself, are undervaluing the fact that Groot and Drax are absolute crap right now because of Nebula, but Rocket Raccoon, Star-Lord, and Gamora have a mm -hmm. lot of value to them because for Rocket Raccoon and Star-Lord, their ratio in how far up they jump is much more beneficial. You know, Rocket Raccoon goes from a 1-2 to a 1-4. He's doubling his yeah. power. You know, Star-Lord's going 2-2 two, two to 2-5. Two, He's going up 150%. Drax is yeah. going from a 4-4 four, four to a 4-6. Mm, he's a 4-5. Sorry, nine, right? I said that backwards. Yeah, yeah. he got, he got switched up. But the yeah. point is, his gain 
is not plus yeah. 100%. Same thing with Groot. Groot is now, I believe, a 3-4 that goes up to a 3-6. When it used to be 3-3 yeah. three, three yeah, to 3-6. Yeah. And yeah. It, those ratios are going to matter when you play them if you're looking to play them with that strategy in mind, which is go ahead, come at me in this lane. I challenge you to. Yeah. And, and the good part, though, is even... Even though that they're they did kind of take away one of their pluses and just put them as a, a standard, right, a static on their right. Flat uh, power, stack. right. the 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 good part about it though is if you played Nebula, Nebula, right, on turn one, turn two, maybe you didn't play, you played something somewhere else. Turn three, you play Groot, anticipating that they're like, oh man, Nebula's getting big. I can't let her get big. Now you caught them with a Groot. Yes, it's not giving yeah. you like. Going from a three four to three eight, but I mean three four to three six is still pretty good. So, yeah. and even if they don't play, now you've put a three four and Nebula. And now it's turn three, right? Now she's gone up yeah. four points. So you've got a one five and a three four, which is going to win a lot of lanes because oh, if yeah. they don't play Absolutely. the next turn, <laughs> she's going it's up gonna even go more up again. Exactly. Um, there's but a, yeah. There's I mean, I. Thing. I'm sorry. No, yeah. it's just one of those things where I I think that this is where. We've always struggled with the Guardians in general outside of Gamora because Gamora has shown up in like the Galactus decks where you literally have one lane to play in. But all these yeah. other ones that we've struggled with them because they just, when you miss, it feels bad, right? And that's why they did try to change Groot and Drax. But now you have a spot where it's like, you're probably not going to miss because they're going to be seeing that Nebula going up unless they have a Killmonger or something like that. They're going to try to not let you have that lane. So... Yeah, they're going to they're it's going to be a lane that it's an announced competition and there's something that's important to understand with this too is mm -hmm. the verbiage on it says each turn your opponent doesn't play a card right. here. That means things like doom bots being added over into the other right. lanes that doesn't count. So don't think that the solve to it is spreading wide, you know, with your squirrel girl mm -hmm. and your Shanna and to bring her back full circle or <laughs> doom bots or any of that na nature. It's about when you yeah. play it here. And the more I looked at it, that's what convinced me to not pull the trigger in these last few hours with Stegron because yeah. Stegron will not be a defense mechanism for Nebula to say, oh, no, you didn't play a card here because it counts as played in that lane and then yeah. it is moved and then it is activated in a different lane. So if it's if they're revealing second, that is. So yeah, because yeah. of that, I was like, mm, okay, so I, I'm officially, I didn't pull the trigger on Stegron. I've been back literally back and forth all week. I've been messaging STG as well, getting like confirmation of like, you know, would you like, what you didn't like? I'm thinking about this. Maybe like just trying to get something yeah, from yeah. Super Tech God because I know he absolutely loves Stegron and he's a lot of fun. And I think there's still a lot that I know I'm sleeping on with him. Mm -hmm. But I think with Nebula coming and all of the incredible cards coming this week, um, we have some really surprisingly fun, different meta shaking decks to yep. come to light here. So uh, I know you sent me one to kind of get us started uh, for the Nebula season. Um, mm -hmm. Tell me about, assuming I, I have it here, the Nebulizer as it has been called yeah. and why you liked this deck and why you wanted to talk about this deck for your deck of the yeah. week. Absolutely. So the nebulizer, this is not my deck. I will caveat that uh, pilch over on snap.fan uploaded this deck. It was one of those decks that was in my mind, right? When we, when we think of nebula coming in here and what is going on with, like you mentioned, uh, you, you've got the whole uh, super scroll running around, right? This has a lot of answers to that deck. So yes, Surfer would have been good too, but I really think that this can have a spot because you've got your one drops. You have your Sunspot and your Nebula. Two best one drops right now in the game. And it allows you kind of to go a little wide. So I can play Nebula or I can play Sunspot. Turn one, let those guys build up. Uh, turn two, I've got my Daredevil. I love Daredevil, especially with Nebula, especially with the Guardians. So we're going to bring back the Guardians in here. We've got Groot, we've got Drax, we've got Gamora. You mentioned Rocket, you mentioned um, Star-Lord, but my problem with those two right now is just the fact of where do you put them in the deck because I've got my best two one-drops. and When it comes to twos, we've got Goose and Zabu. Um, I'm going to come back to Goose in a minute. With Zabu, we've got Groot in there. 
um, coming down, not with Sabu, but we've got Groot coming down potentially on that, um, on that turn where they're trying to play in the Nebula. If not, uh, we've got our Zabu that can help us with Absorbing Man, Drax, and Spider-Man, making them cheaper. So again, now I have the ability to potentially, with this Daredevil, um, see what you're doing on turn five. And I have a lot of different options that I can play, right? I can see where you're going and I can drop Gamora. I can drop Drax. I can drop, you know, group plus someone. Like there, there's a lot of movements you can do in there um, with being able to see what they're going to do and predict what they're going to do. Uh, the other cards that I love in here is Polaris. So if you see a lot of people are using uh, their nebulas everywhere, guess what? Players can grab that nebula and move them around. So maybe you've already set up one of your locations or you know where you want to play. Uh, you move the nebula over there and then you just start playing into that lane uh, and mess up what they're trying to do. So I really like Polaris in here, which again goes back to those surfer decks. I think if you're playing surfer, Polaris is definitely the card to look at if we're starting to see nebula and Kitty Pride later popping up, uh, being able to move some stuff around. Um, the other thing, again, we already see it. Spider-Man Daredevil, always a good turn five to block out a turn six, which can help your Nebula get those last two points to overtake a lane. Um, and then, you know, beyond that, I'm going to come back real quick to Goose. So everybody's playing that uh, Super Scroll. Well, guess what? I'm going to play that Goose. Now their Super Scroll's also going to have Goose on the lane. So now I've locked out two different lanes that they can't play their Ultron into. They can't play their Onslaught into. They can't play the big cards that they're wanting to finish this game with, like Abomination, right? So this is one of those things where I think in the past, Goose was always overlooked because usually you can kind of play around a Goose. But with so many Super Scrolls, being able to Goose two lanes, pretty insane. So yeah. uh, again... It may not be your turn two as your goose. It may be your turn four or whatever when you see the super scroll come out uh, to mess up their turn six. Maybe he's coming down turn five to mess up their turn six. But I love that kind of play there. Um, and again, Absorbing Man, I skipped over him, but essentially, you know, he can get that double stuff. So you can come more on five, uh, Absorbing Man on turn six if you wanted to uh, with maybe a Drax or something if you get your Zabu out. So a lot of really cool stuff in the deck. That's why I picked it out. I, it's one of the decks I want to start to try to uh, test with. Again, you know, it's just, just good all around. And of course, She-Hulk, if you're saving up any of that energy, she's always a good, a good uh, you know, turn four if you don't have a better play type thing. So, Yeah, I mean, She-Hulk is just a, you know, a top plug and play card. But to, to recap the deck on the audio side, the deck nebulizer is Sunspot, Nebula, Daredevil, Goose, Zabu, Groot, Polaris, Absorbing Man, Spider-Man, Drax, Gamora, She-Hulk. It yep. is very interesting, and specifically one of the things I had not thought about uh, that brings a new synergy into my head uh, is with Polaris because of the amount of people that will be playing this amazing one drop is mm -hmm. the fact that you can actually use it as a extra piece for yourself where if you play Nebula in your lane and then Polaris in your lane, to move something that they've played somewhere else yep. previously into it, clogging up the other side of the battlefield so they have less opportunities to play into that nebula lane. And yep. I had not thought about that before, and I absolutely love that tactic and idea, which opens up a lot of possibilities <laughs> specifically, a lot of possibilities um, yep. for absolutely. clog it up. You know, you've got me thinking Silver Surfer, Debris, Polaris, yep. bring the rocks over, like, you, you got me brainstorming and uh, <laughs> we're live and I can't m build a deck in the creator right now. So uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm OK with the issue. Uh, yeah, but I actually really like that idea. Uh, it is a very solid deck. The Spider-Man play. I will say this. Spider-Man's hit or miss for me because yeah. I'm always a fan of spider Manning either in turn three or turn five. I hate him as a four drop. I think he's yeah, yeah. very dependent on get him out with Zabu in this case mm -hmm. for this specific deck that you want to buy that turn four for free just to annoy your opponent more than yeah. anything else. And then they got to play into it because now they've, Oh wow, it just got two extra power over there. Uh Oh, so now we really have to play into it. So then turn six yeah. comes around and boom, Gamora, you know, drop that down as well. So uh, it's a very and, cool deck. Yeah. And, and Spider-Man to, to your point, like that's how I play him too. He's either a turn three early 
uh, or a turn five to lock out a lane. And again, with cards like Nebula, you want to lock out that lane so they can't play into it. But yeah, I mean, if I'm looking at it, that's probably maybe the weakest card there. But if you also think about Spider-Man on four with Absorbing Man on five, the same lane, you could literally yeah. lock out that lane for Nebula the whole time. Maybe that's overkill because you're skipping too many turns. But uh, if you do that, you are also going down to two lanes they can play in and you can really predict that Gamora better, right? So uh, yeah. there are some other play play patterns around that that could be pretty good with Gamora being a 12, essentially coming down on turn six where you know they're going to play based on what they need to win. So yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's pretty a fun solid. strat. Yeah, it's a fun strat with this deck. I, I like... I like it. I will try it myself, just to say I do, but I'm, I'm going to try, you know, the, the ones I theorized <laughs> first and see, you know, if I actually nailed something on the head there or not, or if I was close. Yeah, yeah. Um, Nebula is going to be a really, really solid card to come mm -hmm. to the game. I think that it is a very, at the moment, it is a strong but not meta-changing card, which is what I think a season pass card yeah. should be. It's a card that either is necessary for an archetype it is a card that is a good option all around to always plop in. Just like Zabu's always been a good card to always plop in. If you're doing mm -hmm. a, multi a smaller deck, Hit Monkey is going to be a good card to plop in and is great for a bounce archetype. Modok is great yeah. for a discard archetype. Nebula, her home, I think, is going to be in a control archetype. Yeah. Until people find that her real home should be Galactus. <laughs> i like that i like where you I mentioned it I, I like that um being an option of making a commit somewhere else and then being able to galactus there yeah dust galactus uh, dust gas and galactus is the deck that i have for her which is a just a pretty standard galactus deck but her instead of yondu because i think she brings mm -hmm. more strategic value to the deck versus the death that happens from killing a card via yondu and uh I it's going to be one as much as I like and don't like Galactus decks, depending on what I'm trying to do in the month. Uh, I'm going to try it and see if it works out and see if it's what I actually need it to do. It needed to be because it's going to be relevant, just like Killmonger is going to be incredibly yeah. relevant. Armor is going to be incredibly relevant. You're going to see even uh, I think Cosmo comes back again with another reason because people are going to want to play all these guardians together with nebula and you're going to plop that Gos cosmo down one of the turns and oh no sorry you don't get bonuses anymore sorry yeah you know, but it's it's going to be a good yeah. month i'm i'm excited for what this month has to bring i'm also excited that the fact that for those who do have not heard uh i'll announce it here first uh you're actually going to get three podcasts out of us this week technically sort of kind of kind of because <laughs> yeah you're getting two snapback podcasts as we always do but we are actually uh, honored with the presentation of being able to join uh, Super Tech God and record with him uh, tomorrow night for his mm -hmm. podcast. And I mean, there's there's so much happening, man. There's so much happening this week. Yeah. I have such an action packed week. I know we're working on reformatting this uh, this podcast as well in the next two weeks. Like I have my new computer being built like we have so many cool things that are going to be yeah. coming to both channels. So if they want to see what's going on with your channel, as well as the snap.fan channel, where can they hear yeah. all of these up-to-date things, including this live recording? Yeah, absolutely. So if you want to hang out with us and listen to this live, you can hang out at twitch.tv slash default Dan. That is my personal channel. We hang out here Mondays. Um, I'll, you know, if you want to check out other stuff that I do over on YouTube, the youtube.com slash default Dan. Uh, the rest of the time, I'm usually over on the snap.fan, so twitch.tv slash snap.fan, all spelled out, so dot D-O-T. Um, and we're going to be hanging out there on Wednesdays. So if you guys, you know, you want to play some snap, you want to play in a tournament, but you don't want it to be super competitive, come hang out with us on Wednesdays because we're doing four rounds. We're calling it Wednesday Night Snap Fan. And it's essentially just four rounds. Come hang out, and then we've got some prize money to go to people who are uh, have four wins, three wins. Again, it'll all be determined based on the week, how many people show up. Uh, but I'm excited. This week, we've got 37 plus people already signed up. I checked earlier today, it was 37. 
no idea what it's at now. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be just hanging out there four rounds. That's, that's all it is. Just four rounds of Swiss, uh, no cut to top eight, nothing like that. Just having fun. And, uh, whoever brings the most fun deck, you're going to win some stuff. You're going to win. I believe it's the season pass this week. Maybe next week it'll be some gold or something like that in the, in the game, but maybe some credits, but yeah, it's going to be, going to be fun. So that's where you can find me those different channels as well as, uh, hanging out with guests. Yeah, right here on the Snapback Podcast, which you can find on YouTube, on my personal YouTube, at It's Guest Gaming, which is the same username you will find me everywhere on. Uh, this week in particular, I'm doing four morning streams due to a variety of different reasons. So I'm, you'll find me at It's Guest Gaming on Twitch. You find me here on YouTube. Find me over on Twitter, Discord. I've been really active. I did a, a giveaway, uh, a 12-hour only giveaway uh, mm -hmm. today, which was incredibly, like, fun to watch and successful and i made it real simple you know just hey post up your shop follow this follow this call it a day and people loved it so uh i i think we're going to do more of those in the future as well so make sure you head over to twitter or you can message me on discord all of the socials links will be available down below or they're on all of the other socials anyway you'll always be able to find us but just like mm -hmm. here on the snapback podcast you can always find us so default dan thank you so much good sir as we say yeah. salutations to our audience. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Snapback Podcast, where you snap and we snap back. All out of live, everybody. Thank you so much. Y'all take it easy. Just using my normal one. Just, just using just the normal going, one. Just, just going classic. You know, it's just classic. classic take it easy. Classic like, today. I know that's yours. I'll take kinda, it easy. Kind of, sort of. Yeah, just don't <laughs> tell that to easy. That's all. That's true. That's true.